Welcome back, everybody. Okay, now today we want to look at all right some other concept all right as well. Now we've been deploying to you know just one server all right all the while basically um, you know to just basically one environment right. Now let us assume that we want to you know deploy. Uh, to you know a different environment because I mean in a, in a normal work environment you have the development environment and you also have the staging all right environment right so let's assume that we want to you know leverage that we want to deploy to to development and we also want to deploy to staging right now what we are going to do in order to just you know reduce the cost all right you know that we have to spend on service we are going to use just a single server all right to just test out this deployment strategy right how to deploy to you know your staging how to de deploy to your development environment so let's see how we can actually all right do all of that okay so here i'm going to change the stages that i have here i'm going to just call this one deploy to dev and then I'm going to create another one and I'll call that deploy. All right. So deploy underscore to staging, right? So I'm going to call that staging. Okay. Now that is what I'm going to call that, right? And then I'm going to come here. Of course, I'm going to copy back all of these that we extracted all the time. And then I'm going to make sure that I bring all of that back. Okay, so now that is back. So here already I have my build image, I have my push image, and then I have my deploy stage. Okay, so what I want to do here is basically, first of all, we need to update, all right, the URL, right? So we need to update this because, I mean, from the last time the IP address of our server must have changed. So we can click on instances. And from here, we can click on the dev server, all right, grab the public IP that you have here and make sure you change, all right, this, okay? And then you can also grab the public DNS endpoint, and then you can replace that uh, with what you have right here. Okay. And don't forget to put your HTTP here. All right. I mean, to make it a complete URL. Is that okay? Now let's see what we can actually do right here. So if you scroll down, we have, um, you know, if you scroll all the way down, we have deploy. So we can change this one to underscore deploy. All right, dev, basically, just basically identifying that. So we can say deploy underscore dev. So this is deployed to dev. And this, all right, basically belongs to that stage, which is deploy dev, right? So we have that. So, I mean, if you look at the stages that we have, we have the, all right, deploy underscore dev stage. We have deploy underscore stage and stage, right? So we can pull that right here as well. So this is going to be in another stage, which is called deploy underscore dev. Now we're still going to be using our Docker, you know, runner, basically with the Docker executor. All right. And of course, we're still going to be using our Docker Compose, uh, you know, for that particular purpose, right? So that is exactly what we're still going to be using. Okay. Now all of this is fine, right? So what we can do here is basically to, you know, we can copy all of this, right? So we can copy this line like this copy that all right and then you can use that to create another environment so this can be deployed to staging now all right and then this is going to be deploy underscore staging i mean that's the new stage for that right now here under the environment you can change this all right to the name of the environment so this is going to be staging instead of uh you know instead of development right and then you can change this one to staging all right, endpoint. Okay. Now, since we're using the same server, it basically means that it's going to be the same IP, the same all right endpoint as well. So you can scroll all the way up, all right, and then you can just basically duplicate this. But then just watch what I'm doing here. So you can duplicate these, and then this can be all right. So you can call this one okay, the staging IP, for example. All right. So you can give that name, you know, staging all right, and IP. So let's say staging underscore ip and then here i'm going to call these all right staging all right underscore endpoint okay now don't forget we have to change all right a few things okay so for some kind of you know uniformity we can also change this one to the dev all right ip okay now what will happen is that this is going to change all right in some place so you can copy that all right and scroll all the way down all right and then you get to your deploy the dev and you basically, all right, have to change this one right here, right? So, I mean, the name has changed to dev underscore IP. And then don't forget to change it here as well, all right? So, change that also from there. 
Okay, and then do we have any other place we need to change it? I don't think so. Right now, this dev endpoint has also changed. So let's check what the new name, all right, is. So the new name, all right, is still dev endpoint, right? So that's okay. But for the staging, we need to copy this IP, which is the variable now. So we scroll down all the way to the deploy to staging, okay? And then we can come here, all right, and basically change this. I mean, of course, it's the same IP anyway, but then normally you're supposed to use different, all right, servers, right? That would be the ideal situation, but then we're just trying to save on cost here, all right? And that's why we're using um, the same, you know, IP address and the same server for everything, right? So here we have the staging endpoint, which I believe it should still be, all right, the same thing here. So staging endpoint. So that is still uh, very correct. Now, the one thing that we need to know is this. Now, our development endpoint is for 3000. But staging cannot also be, all right, for 3000. Because on your host machine, you can only open up one port, right, on your host machine to connect to your container port, right? Now, your container ports can use the same port numbers, right? But your host machine, you can open, all right, you know, the same ports to the same to different applications on your host machine, right? So if you have two applications, they have to use different ports on your host machine, right? They cannot use the same port. I mean, that will cause a lot of confusion. In fact, your container is not even going to start. So what we, we can do here is that we can actually change this. So we can say from here, let's say staging is going to use port 4000 on the host machine. At the same time, it's still going to be connecting to port 3000, all right, of the container port. But then for, from the host start, or from the host side, it is going to be what? Port 4000, right? So that is one thing that we need to know right there. Okay. So let's change that, all right, to port 4000. Then let's see uh, what we can actually do. Now we are deploying all right, with, you know, Docker Compose. So it means also that we need to do some, you know, some, um, you know, so, some things has to change, right, in the Docker Compose file, right? We need to change some things there because, I mean, if you look at the Docker Compose, we're still saying that everything is connecting on port 3000 to port 3000, right? That's what we still have here. So if we deploy what we have like this, definitely we're going to run into error. Now, the, the dev can start, but the staging, all right, will not start. Right, so we need to change all right some parameters right there. So here under the dev all right stage, we need to add one more all right variable here. All right, we need to add one more variable right here. Okay, now here we can come here and say export. All right, so let's export this. All right, so we're going to say export dc underscore app. All right, underscore path, and then we're going to say. All right, for this one, the port is what? Is 3000, right? And then don't forget to, all right, it's 3000. And don't forget to put this right here, all right? Now, another thing here that we need to pay attention to is that now we are changing the port to port 3000, okay? But do you know that when we start our Docker Compose, the Docker Compose will start with this name app, right? I mean, you can go actually to the server, for example. Now, on the server, if I do Docker PS, I think A, right, I can see from here, all right, you know, some information right here, okay? But of course, we don't have anything here just yet, right? So we can come here and do Docker images, all right? So we can see with that we have a lot of images here, right? I mean, we have quite a number of images that we actually need to clean up, okay? So let's do something here. So we can do Docker prune or Docker system. So let's come here and say Docker system, all right, prune, I think AF, right? So you can pull that, all right? I mean, that would just basically just clear up your environment, you know, all the containers that are no longer running, all the images that are not attached to any container. That command is basically just going to clear them, all right, for us automatically, right? So let's clear up our environment, all right, and let that happen, okay? Like that. Now here, we have this 3000. This is basically the host port, and this is the container port, right? Now we need to make some adjustments right here. So what can we do? How can we just do these adjustments? So now instead of coding the pod numbers like these, we can actually just, you know, reference that variable, right? So here, so we're going to say here, open your curly brace, all right? And then we're going to say dc underscore, all right, app underscore path, all right? And then we basically just close that. And then we can say colon, all right, 3000. So basically what we are doing with this one now is basically to say that the app port should be gotten from here. All right, but at the end of the day, the container port should remain, all right, port 3000. That is basically what we're saying here. But there is still a little problem, right? Because, I mean, the Docker container is going to start with this name, right, as the service, which is going to be app, 
right? So we need to do some kind of name change so that, I mean, our container can start with things like the dev container, and then we can also see the staging container so that the containers can have different names, right? So they won't have the same name, which can also cause a right, challenge. Because, I mean, if Docker Compose sees that a container is already running with that particular name, it basically will not start the second container because, I mean, two containers cannot technically have the same name, right? So what we can do here is to go back to this GitLab CI YAML, and then here we can add another export, right? So export, okay? So we can go there and do another export. So we can say export, all right? Now there's a variable for Docker Compose called compose, all right, underscore project, all right, underscore name, and then we can say equals to dev, right? So basically, this is a Docker Compose, all right, variable, right? Now, what this would do is that instead of starting up, all right, our containers with just app, it's going to start with dev, and then it's going to append whatever name it wants to append, all right, to it. So basically, what we're doing here is that we're overriding, all right, just using the app, all right, for all of our containers, right? So we want something that will be unique so that we can identify that this container belongs to dev and this other container belongs to what? To staging. So that is basically what we're trying to do, all right, here. Okay, so now that we have done that, we can go back, all right, to this uh, place. We can actually just copy all the things that we have here. All right, scroll down to staging, all right, and basically just, you know, populate it here as well. But then this is going to be what? It's going to be staging, all right? So that's what that is going to be. So that'll be staging. And then this port number here will be what? Will be 4,000, okay? So we need to take note, all right, of that, okay? Now, what else do we need to do here before we finally run the pipeline, all right? So we need to check a few things, all right? So deploying to staging, so the environment is developing. So now what we're going to have here is that we're going to have two environment, all right, in our GitLab, all right, CI CD. So if you go to GitLab and then you go to operate and you go to environment, right, you're basically going to have two environment, okay? So you're going to have, all right, an environment for dev and an environment for staging, okay? So two different environment is what we're going to have right here, all right? So that is what we're going to have there. So let's see um, what we can do with this. So we already configured all of these ones. So I think everything is good as is. All right. So now we need to check something. So DC image name, do we have all of that? So let's check very well. All right. So we have the image name here connecting to that. We have the image tag here. All right. Still connecting to, all right, the view.env. All right. So everything seems good. All right. Of course, we can actually just remove this one, right? This lint test, I don't think we need it again. So we can basically just, I mean, we can basically just remove that, all right? And we can still keep this catch, all right, that we have right here, all right? So we can still keep that as is. Is that okay? Now, let's run our container. So git commit, all right? So we're going to say staging, environment, Add it, and then let's do git push. All right, so that will trigger the pipeline automatically. Okay, so we have some issues here. So perhaps, uh, okay, maybe I committed some things in the repository already. So I'm just going to say git pull. All right, so let's do git pull. Okay, so that's good. I mean, we're learning with all of these. So I'm just going to save that. All right, but then we need to check our pipeline to be sure that, you know, it has not altered anything. Of course, we've committed these changes already, so I don't think that would um, affect, all right, anything um, here, but we just need to verify uh, just in case, you know, anything has been tampered with. But I don't think anything has been tampered with here. All right, so we're just going to go ahead, all right, and then we're just going to push, all right, these changes to the repo. So let's do git push now. All right, so git push, and let's see what happens. So the git push has gone, of course, we can go back to the pipeline. All right, go to build, click on pipelines, and now the pipeline should be started. So now you can see that we have four different stages, right? So we have deploy to dev, and we have deploy uh, to staging. So let's basically just watch, you know, what happens, right? So I'm going to pause my screen at this point, and then once the job is completed, or if anything happens, and then I'll resume back the recording, All right? So let's take a look. Now, look at that. Now, the job actually has been completed, 
All right. I mean, from what you can see here, we can see that the job passed. So the unit test passed, the build image passed, deploy to dev passed, and deploy to staging. All right, also passed. So we can actually go now to our server. All right, to verify. All right, all of these things. Okay. So now I can come here and say Docker PS. Okay. So let's see that. Um, which server am I on? Okay, I think I'm on the wrong server actually. Right, so let me go back and see uh, what server I am on. This is 31, 29, 39. So let's see, oops, I'm actually on the wrong server. So I'm actually on the GitLab runner server. So I'm not on the dev server. So that's why, you know, we have all of that. So let me just copy this to connect to the correct one. So I'm just going to exit here. All right, and correct to and connect to the correct server. Okay, so here we're just going to do git. Sorry, not git, pardon me. So Docker PS. All right, now look at what we have here. Now you can see here that we have dev and then it appended the app and then one, right? And then you can see here that we have staging, all right, one. Now, if you have not configured, all right, that particular, you know, configuration that we did right here, basically specifying the project name for the Docker Compose, now it will have created the two containers with the same name, which will have been, you know, maybe app one, app one. And that will have resulted into all right a failure right but you can see here that our staging now is connecting on port 4000 but of course it's still directing that traffic to the same container port but of course in docker you don't have that issue right your containers can basically be using the same port what matters actually is the host port so the host port should differ all right from each other but the container port can actually be the same all right, so here, port 4000, of course, will be directed back to the port 3000 of this container, and this one will be directed also to the port 3000 of the container port, right? So now Docker is basically seeing these as different containers, right? So these are different container, and this is also a different container, and they are basically, all right, isolated from one another, okay? So now if I go back to my pipeline, all right, and I come here to operate, and I click on environment, right? I should see, all right, just two environments, okay? So I will see my staging environment right here. And if I open the staging environment, right, I can see that this is connecting on what? On port 4000, right? So that's connecting on port 4000. Of course, that may not open because, I mean, security group, you have to open up your port 4000 in order for these to work, right? But of course, let's look at the development on and let's open that up. And of course, that is going to open because, I mean, we already have port 3000 open up, all right, in our security group. So that is well understandable. So if I go back to my instance, all right, and I can come to my instance here, uh, my dev instance, I can click on security. Right. If I scroll down, sorry. Uh, all right. So if I scroll down, I can see that the only port that I have here opened is what is port three thousand. So I need to click on my security group. All right, and basically just you know open up the port four thousand. So I'll click on edit inbound, add row, and then here I will say port four thousand. All right, and then I can open that up to anybody and save rules. Right now, if I close this again and I go back to my environment and I click on the staging environment and I open that up again, now my application is accessible. All right, on port 4000. Okay, now that is basically how to do multi stage all right deployment. Okay, but then one thing here that I want us to look at together is that I mean, this is not tidy all right enough, it's becoming you know clumsy and all of that. So what can we do to reduce all right, the configuration that we have right here? I mean, imagine if we are deploying to the production, right? That means we're going to have to duplicate all of these things all over again and do the same thing, right? I mean, that means we're going to be duplicating a lot of you know lines and we can actually just, you know, use some kind of logic to reduce all right, this code duplication, okay? So in the next video, we're going to see exactly how we can reduce this configuration, all right, using another GitLab, all right, keyword called extend, okay? In the next video, we're going to see how to do that, all right, exactly, because we're going to look at how to deploy to production, and let's see how we can use extend to minimize, all right, this code duplication. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.